Hello, so what I basically wanted to do in this video was do a minimal install of Fedora 41 uh, using the alt install that is the net, basically a network install image similar to what Debian uses. Um, and to get that, obviously, you can go to fedoraproject.org and you scroll down here to the alt downloads. Um, and that's where you can download the network installer and or they call it the everything installer the network installer and that will get you the ISO you'll need to boot into I've already downloaded that so let's go ahead and build our VM I'll give it four gigs it automatically selected four gig and I'll do uh, just four cores on my CPU nothing major I'm gonna give it 50 gig I won't really need it but I'll do it just in case I want to toy with this VM later I'm gonna customize because I want to what I want to do is go in and change to UEFI just so because most people their system is UEFI if you have a modern system even at this point older systems are all UEFI um, so the chances are if you're going to install this on hardware you're going to be using the UEFI and to properly test everything I think it's best to try to do it in the VM uh, every once in a while you'll run into issues where the VM a virtual machine won't quite work uh, with UEFI but here lately I've not really had very many issues and so we'll begin this install. I'm going to move this over here. And so you can test the media if you if you want to make sure that the ISO burned correctly and that um, you know it's going to not have any errors. But I'm not worried about that on a VM. So we'll go ahead and install. And that's when you'll be greeted with the Anaconda installer, which is the installer that Fedora has used for a very long time. I do believe that maybe the next version, 42, they're going to be uh, doing a new installer. Obviously, I'll, I'll do a video on that one if that gets released. There might be a beta of it. I'm not sure. But uh, the VM acts a little funky in here. I don't think you can see this on the video, but on my VM, the mouse cursor disappears a lot so I may have a hard time selecting things but anyway you'll come in here it'll do English it'll do most of the time it'll de detect things uh, the way I want them so it's got my time zone correct it's got that all correct I want to do it over the network that will make sure I get the latest updates um, here is where you'll select your drive. Now, a lot of people have had issues where they click that, like you'll go back here, you'll click this, and you'll think, oh, I need to select this drive, and then that actually diselects it, because it will automatically select this drive. I don't know how the new installer will handle that. Hopefully they'll fix those issues later, but this has been an issue with the Anaconda installer that people have complained about for quite some time. I actually want to go ahead and do a... Uh, a custom configuration. Uh, because I'm going to be doing a minimal install, I kind of want to set things up custom instead of the automatic. The automatic will work, but I prefer to set up my partitions manually. It's called the Blavet or Blavet GUI, and it works pretty well. So we'll go ahead and do that, and that's when you'll be uh, greeted with this. So what we need to do is create, first off, I want an EFI since I am using an EFI system and you'll do that uh, the mount point as boot EFI that seems to work pretty well and then obviously I don't need the full 50 gig I'll do about one gig, gig oh shoot yeah, I'll do about one gig of uh, of an EFI and I usually on something like um, Debian and Arch, I'll set up a swap partition. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Fedora automatically does a ZRAM swap in the install, so I'm not worried about creating a swap partition. 
but I do need to create the root partition. Obviously, you can create other partitions if you want, but I just need the boot and root. So now I'll do ext4. You can select many different ones. Um, yeah, they have. They even have the old ext2 still. Um, Butterfest is very popular. XFS is very popular. I stick with the tried and true ext4. And then we will make this our root partition. That's what the little slashy there means. Again, my cursor keeps messing up in here. Um, and so our partitions look good. So we'll do done on that. And it'll basically tell you, are you sure you want to destroy everything and create these partitions? And that's what we want to do. Um, here, I also like to just create a host name because I think it'll default to something like Fedora or localhost or something. I don't even know what the default, but I'll just make my own host name. It's actually down here at the bottom where you put in the host name that you want. So I'll just do, uh, I'll just call it Fedora. Um, and also in this part here, the network, if you need to connect to a Wi-Fi or if you need to set up the network a little differently, you can do that there. Here is where the magic happens. Obviously, you can pick any one of these that you want. If you are wanting an, an i3, a Sway, Miracle WM, which is, I think, still in beta. Uh, Cosmic is definitely, like, only in what, alpha at this point. I don't even know if they've come out with a beta on it yet, but they do have it available to install. Um, you can pick any one of these and have these desktops automatically set up if you really want to, but I want to do a custom, and that's what this is. The first option here and I don't even worry about any of this other stuff over here. Um, I just want to have a bare bones minimal install to build from. And that's what we're going to select. So you'll click done there. Root account. I'm not too worried about enabling root uh, because under user creation, I want to make sure I have administrative privileges. You can go ahead and set a root password if you want to, but under VM, I'm not worried about that. Just do the name, whatever name you want it to be. Password, a very, very complicated one. That will be extremely difficult for anybody to figure out. Uh, and it'll, if you do a really short password, it will let you do it, but it will complain at you, and it'll make you select done twice. You'll have to, because you'll click it, and again, that error message is way down here. You may not even notice it, but it doesn't like that I've put a too short of a password, and so it'll make me push done twice to confirm that I actually want to use a short password. So you click done, click done, and then you're ready to roll. You'll click begin installation. And since this is a network install, it pulls everything from the network. So you should get the latest updates. There shouldn't be a lot to upgrade once you reboot into the system. Uh, everything should be what is current under uh, in the uh, Fedora repos. So we're just going to let this take, shouldn't take too awful long if my son isn't hogging up my internet. Um, it, generally speaking, it's actually pretty, pretty fast. Uh, I'm not going to pause or do anything like that. I'm just going to sit here and chat with you guys while we do this. Da, da, do, 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 do. But um, the... the with doing a Fedora minimal install like this is kind of neat because Fedora does a lot of things kind of for you. Like if you install something like Sway, you know, it'll set, uh, well, Fedora has the tendency to set up a lot more um, dependencies. It'll pull in more dependencies than like something like even Debian will do. Um, whereas like Arch doesn't pull in a whole lot of extra dependencies. So you usually have to set even more things up or download more packages. A lot of times with Fedora, unless you specifically configure it to not do it, it will pull in a lot of dependencies and make setting things up you know, fairly easy uh, from a minimal perspective. So you can start with this minimal install and build up from that. Um, install xorg if you want an xorg and then install something like i3 if you're wanting a window manager. Um, you can install Sway, uh, just doing the DNF and in, uh, install Sway actually sets, you know, gets everything you need for Sway up and running pretty much, you know, so you just get that. It'll pull in quite a few dependencies and get those things set up pretty well. Sometimes this install can take a bit. There we go. 
since it's a minimal, it doesn't take very long usually. Now, if you select something like GNOME or KDE, this process takes, depending on the speed of your internet, can take quite a while. It's generating the init RAM FS, so we should be almost done. Post scripts, and there we go. And then you'll get this beautiful reboot button, and we'll do that. And hope it works. And it looks like it did. And they are on the latest kernel, uh, which 6.12.6 is very latest. I mean, that is, I think, the current stable kernel. Uh, it boots fast. As you saw that, that was a very quick boot because it doesn't have a whole lot of anything installed currently. So we're looking at a very minimal install. And that's, that's it. Um, and it does. You, you see there were the ZRAM swap. Um, that's why I didn't set up a swap partition because it will automatically do that ZRAM swap. So you don't have to worry too much about that. And you can install anything. Well, I'm just installing fast fetch, I think. And you can see this it is pulling quite a few even when I install fast fetch it's installing quite a few dependencies even the weak dependencies and everything so it installs quite a bit even when I'm just doing fast fetch um, or something like arch probably wouldn't pull in that many dependencies the advantage to it doing that is that when you install something like it's installing Mesa even uh, you will get um, and pulse audio yeah you know you'll get a little bit easier setting things up so it, it, it does have advantages the disadvantage is it may pull in a lot of extra dependencies you don't want now you can set it up to where it won't pull in those weak dependencies and those sort of things I usually go ahead and leave that set because it does make setting things up a lot easier and there we go um, what's it saying I'm using 456 megabytes so I mean it you know it, it is a little heavy for a very minimal install and Fedora just kind of is going to be um, compared to a minimal install of Arch or Debian or like Void Linux or something like that so it, it's going to generally use a little bit more because it does again like I say pull in more dependencies it probably enables a lot more system D services and things like that you can trim it down if you really wanted to from this point uh, if you really wanted to tinker and, and toy with it um, We can do H top. The new DNF, I believe it's using DNF 5 now, which is does seem like it is faster than the old DNF. So with Fedora 41, um, the package manager does seem to be quite a bit better. Well, this is only showing me, yeah, that's right. Fast patch will show more RAM than what it's using. So uh, according to H top, we're using 225 megs. So that ain't that's that ain't bad at all. That that's because again, like we don't. You can see some of the services, a lot of the systemd stuff that's running. Uh, Network Manager automatically installed that. I didn't have to manually install that doing the minimal install. So that made, makes getting the network set up. It's got cron and all that all you know, all that stuff running. So even though it is a minimal install, uh, I mean there's not you know there's no uh, you know there's nothing as far as a GUI installed whatsoever. Um, and that's pretty much it. I'm not sure what else we could talk about on this one. Um, I'll go ahead and install NeoVim, Git, and Fish. Again, like see, it pulls in quite a few dependencies, but I mean, every distribution does, has to. Uh, but I've, I've noticed it does seem like Fedora pulls in a little bit more. Um, again, it doesn't bother me because it's it makes life a little bit easier with setting things up <clears throat> so we should have fish oh yeah so that works good um, so yeah that's that's pretty much all for this video short quick video on how to get fedora set up very minimal and uh, you know looking pretty good uh, it's fast and it's it's like say for example if I want to do sudo dnf install sway um, it will pull in almost everything I'll need for Sway. I don't know if this will work in a VM though. I've had issues trying to use Sway in a VM, so I'm kind of doubting it'll work. Um, but I'm curious. 
we got pipe wire yeah it's setting up it's already setting up pipe wire you get grim see it's pulling in grim uh, which is the uh, what is that for uh, uh, screenshotting I think it does the XDG desktop portals all that kind of stuff so things are set up pretty well um, yeah it might be well it somewhat works it's a little glitchy um, probably using foot yeah it's a little glitchy on the VM but it does work and I could probably set the VM up with a different uh, video card emulation and it may work a little bit better but I mean you know it's functioning so anyway I hope you like the video and I'll toy around with some of these other VMs and I'll probably install some other minimal distros and we'll keep up to date with what gets released so i hope you enjoyed the video like subscribe and uh, i appreciate y'all for watching thanks